In this video, which is designed for healthcare professionals, I'm going to cover the 10 essential steps going from the consultation to the treatment to the aftercare, the 10 essential steps to successfully treating leg spider veins by microsclerotherapy. Hello, my name is Dr. Arun Gadraj. I'm a vein specialist with years of experience of running a successful private clinic. And I'm here to offer training and coaching to healthcare professionals like you. So let's start and please, why not stay to the end where I'll share with you what I think is the most common concern patients have after microsclerotherapy and what you should do to address it. So step one is what I call the patient assessment and preparation. And before you even pick up a needle and syringe, a thorough patient assessment is crucial. Assess the patient's medical history, their allergies and any contraindications that might be present. Examine the patient both uh, supine and standing and perform any investigations that you think are required, such as handheld Doppler or venous duplex ultrasound. Explain the procedure in detail and the risks and benefits uh, to your patient and you need to get informed consent. Now I strongly advise you to ask the patient to sign a consent form as part of the evidence of the consent process. Now a, a signed consent form is not a legal requirement in the United Kingdom but I think it is good evidence that you've completed the consent process satisfactorily. Check the legal requirements regarding consent in your own country or state and make sure you give your patient sufficient time to consider the treatment process. Uh, I think it's, it's important not to treat your patient on the same day as the initial consultation. Um, if your patient were to suffer a complication, you don't want your patient to subsequently say that they really didn't have enough time to consider the pros and cons of the treatment before going ahead. Step two, when you come to the treatment day, make sure you've got everything needed. And on the day of treatment, it's essential that you have all the equipment. And in this respect, a checklist is really helpful. Um, you can go through the checklist before your patient arrives and you can tick all the items off. And the main items required obviously are the sclerosant. Make sure you've got the correct um, dilution, the correct strength. Make sure you've got the appropriate needles, syringes, gloves, alcohol wipes. Check the expiry date on your pharmacy and check the uh, sterile packaging of each item for expiry dates. When your patient arrives and, and you, you're about to start treatment, I think step three, which I call patient positioning, is very careful, is very important rather. Uh, patient positioning is essential for successful injections. Um, have the patient lie down and make sure they're comfortable, being particularly mindful of any back, neck, hip or knee problems that your patient may have. Make sure that your patient has a comfortable pillow under their head and that you've got lots of additional pillows um, should you wish to support the patient's knee or calf during the procedure. And when they're supine, make sure you've got uh, adequate lighting to uh, illuminate the area that you're going to inject. Step four is what I call vein identification. Uh, carefully check the spider veins that your patient wants treated. Um, that's what they've come for. Make sure they get those areas of their leg treated. Um, use magnification if needed. I, I certainly use uh, magnification routinely. Mark the veins with a skin safe marker uh, to guide your injections and maintain consistency throughout your treatment. Step five, identify any feeder veins also called reticular veins. And in this respect, I find transillumination with a device such as Veinlight particularly helpful. Um, having identified any reticular veins near your spider veins that you're going to treat, make sure that these are injected as part of the treatment process. Step six, hand hygiene. Hand hygiene is very important. So before you approach the patient with a needle or syringe, make sure that you've thoroughly washed your hands and I advise you to wear disposable gloves uh, and a disposable apron. Clean the area to be treated with an antiseptic solution to minimize the risk of infection 
and make sure that you adhere to aseptic technique throughout the procedure. Step seven. Here's where we come to the injection technique. Stretch the skin and insert the fine gauge needle into the target vein using a gentle controlled measure. Ensure that you're entering the vein at the proper angle and slowly inject a small amount of microsclerotherapy, looking for blebs, taking care not to overfill the vein and stop immediately if your patient experiences pain. Step eight, needle removal and compression. Once the injection is complete in that area, withdraw the needle slowly and apply gentle pressure with a sterile gauze. This helps prevent leakage of the, of the solution into the surrounding tissues and it uh, promotes the vein closure. You might also want to massage the area and disperse the sclerosant. Um, Make sure that your patient, step, uh, step nine is make sure your patient understands what will be happening after the treatment session. And in this respect, it's very helpful for you to give your patient written information to take away, which will reinforce what's likely to happen, what your patient should look for uh, in the, during the healing process, and make sure you give them contact details, how and when to contact you if they have any concerns. Finally, steps, steps 10, the follow-up and documentation. I think you should schedule an appointment with your patient before they leave um, so that you can check on their progress and address any concerns. And at this stage, you also want to uh, document the procedure carefully, um, which areas of the leg you were treated, what sclerosant you used, what the uh, strength was and the expiry date, the batch number, and you want to document any uh, reactions that your patient may have had. Did they find it particularly painful? Were there blebs during the procedure? Accurate uh, documentation is very important for medical legal reasons and also for you to assess their progress at follow-up. So there you have it. Ten steps from the initial consultation to the follow-up for successful uh, microsclerotherapy injections. Remember, patient uh, selection, constant practice, precise accurate injections and good patient care are paramount in mastering the whole process of microsclerotherapy. Now at the beginning of this video I told you I was going to share with you what I think is the most common concern patients have after microsclerotherapy and what you can do to address it. Well, in my experience, patients are often surprised and sometimes even alarmed when they look at their spider veins a week or two afterwards, they're surprised they look worse. They may not be aware that this is going to happen and they may not be aware just how long microsclerotherapy takes for the, for the results to become apparent. This needs to be part of your consent form and you need to emphasize this at your, at your initial consultation. Uh, you need to stress that for up to a month after their injection, their spider veins may look worse, uh, considerably worse actually. And this is important for two re reasons. Firstly, it will help manage your patient's expectations. These injections are not going to get rid of spider veins immediately. This is not a quick fix for, for spider veins. It's a process. Um, two or three injection sessions may be required with a gap of six to 12 weeks. The other reason it's important is that your patient may wish to defer treatment uh, because they've got uh, an important upcoming social event or they're just about to go on holiday. Um, I find it particularly helpful uh, to see my patients two weeks later as a routine I can reassure them about the appearance of their spider veins at this stage of the healing process. And if there's any clot formed within the vessel, I can release it at this stage by microthrombectomy. That's pricking any excessive clot formation with a needle, releasing it. And this will reduce the amount of pigmentation that the patient subsequently experiences. Well, thank you for staying to the end. If you found this video helpful, please consider hitting the like button 
Apparently the algorithm likes that and it really will help my channel. Uh, check out all the links in the description box below uh, and you'll find my free mini course on how to inject leg spider veins which is packed with tips for successful injections. And why not subscribe by clicking the button here. Uh, that way you'll get to know about my next video. I look forward to seeing you in due course. Thank you for watching.